previously on the 2020 NFL Season Review. We talked about the Carolina Panthers and how under new owner David Tepper and new head coach Matt Rule, they entered a rebuilding phase in their franchise history. They tried it with quarterback Teddy Bridgewater to replace Cam Newton, but unfortunately that didn't work out and they ended up trading him away. But they did trade for Jets QB and former third overall pick, Sam Donald. So as they enter a new phase in their franchise with a new quarterback, let's just hope that this rebuilding phase goes well for them. On this week's episode, we'll be talking about the 2020 season of the Denver Broncos. Yo, what's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning back into the series and to this week's episode. We're on episode 9, which means we're officially halfway there. But anyway guys, before we get into it, make sure to leave a like on the video, share and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at SportsbudCasually. And with all of that out of the way, let's get into episode 9, the 2020 season of the Denver Broncos. Ever since the Broncos came out victorious in Super Bowl 51, and Peyton Manning rode off into the sunset, a two-time Super Bowl champion, the Broncos have been struggling to find his replacement. Okay, so struggle is an understatement, as they just seemed incompetent in drafting or developing quarterbacks. They've had a total of seven different starting quarterbacks, and they've all resulted in zero playoff appearances since hosting the Lombardi Trophy. But maybe this season would be different, with second-year head coach Vic Vangio and quarterback Drew Locke going into his second season, maybe the offense could finally catch up to their defense and make it back to the playoffs. Well, it turns out that this season was just like the previous one. No playoffs and a bunch of injuries. So, let's get into it. The Broncos got their offseason started by firing their offensive coordinator, Rick Scangarello after just one season. To replace him, they hired former Giants head coach Pat Schirmer to serve as their new offensive coordinator. In free agency, the Broncos lost key starters like center Connor McGovern and cornerback Chris Harris. In terms of signings, the Broncos used their cap space to give big deals to Graham Glasgow and former Pro Bowl running back Melvin Gordon. They signed the rest of their free agents to help show up holes in the roster. In the 2020 NFL Draft, the Broncos used their 15th overall pick to select Jerry Judy, wide receiver out of Alabama. But the Broncos had a decent rookie class as they got good contributions from Michael Ojemudia and Lloyd Cushenberry III. However, the Broncos would get their first case of the injury bug right before the season started, as their premier pass rusher, Vaughn Miller, suffered a dislocated coronial tendon in his ankle which required season-ending surgery. The Broncos had two players opt out of the 2020 season, but they weren't too important. In terms of attendance, the Broncos played their week one home opener behind closed doors. But Colorado Governor Jared Polis announced that the Broncos would be able to fill mile high up to 7% capacity. However, this would only last until week 11, as due to a spike in cases, they had to play their last three home games behind closed doors. The Broncos got off to a rough start to the season, stumbling to an 0-3 record. This became the first time in franchise history they started 0-3 in consecutive seasons. The entire season was spent juggling COVID problems as they had a number of their games and even their bye week rescheduled because of it. It affected numerous players and coaches, but none as badly as their defensive coordinator, Ed Donatel, who required a brief hospital stay to help him recover. He returned to the team in week 14. But nothing will be as bad as week 11 was. Coming into their matchup versus the Saints, the Broncos were four and six 
winning four out of their last seven games. And with Drew Brees out for this game, the Broncos had a decent shot of getting a win. However, disaster struck. Adam Schefter reported just days before the game that Broncos backup QB Jeff Driscoll tested positive and that all of their other quarterbacks, Drew Locke, Brett Ripian, and Blake Bortles had all been in physical contact with him. So everybody was placed in mandatory quarantine and ruled out for week 12. So Broncos had to use undrafted wide receiver Kendall Hinton as the emergency starter as he played quarterback in college. And as you can expect, things didn't go well as the Saints blew them out 31-3. This effectively put a nail in the coffin for the Broncos season. They would lose 4 out of their next 5 games and finish the season 5-11, missing the playoffs for the 5th straight season which tied the second longest streak in franchise history. This also marks the 4th straight losing season, which is the second longest streak in franchise history. The Broncos had two players named to the Pro Bowl, outside linebacker Bradley Chubb and free safety Justin Simmons. They also had their offensive tackle Garrett Bowles named to the AP All-Pro second team. Now, one final sour note to end this section off on. Quarterback Drew Locke tied Carson Wentz for the most interceptions thrown in the league with 15. He also had the lowest completion percentage among 35 quarterbacks with at least 150 passing attempts. Yikes. Now let's get to the season stats for the Broncos. When you look at their overall offense, they were tied for 25th and it was just another rough offensive season for the Broncos. Drew Locke missed some time and he had a very poor season. And the only thing they were good at was running the ball. They were 13th in the league and they also tied for 13th in sacks allowed. So you could tell that they're, at least the offensive line is above average. But 28th in points, 26th in passing yards, 25th in passing touchdowns. And not to mention, they were last in the league in interceptions thrown, so that doesn't really help. When you look at their overall defense, slightly better. I mean, they were tied for second in the league and passing touchdowns allowed, tied for 16th in passing yards, so their secondary was alright. Although they didn't get much turnovers as they were tied for 23rd in the league. But their rushing defense was not good at all. But... I do think that when Vaughn Miller comes back next season, things will improve, but just another rough season defensively. They had some bright spots in their secondary, but their front seven was not that great this season. But I do expect a bounce back season next year. When you look at the advanced stats on offense, just as bad. Last and fourth down conversion percentage, 30th at first downs. They struggle tremendously converting and it's easy to tell with poor quarterback play from Drew Locke, it wasn't that easy to move the chains and get yourself three extra downs. The advanced stats on defense, however, paints a better picture. You know, they were 18th in blitz percentage, but top 10 in both hurry and pressure percentage. So that does show you that they are getting to the quarterback effectively. But besides rushing the quarterback, they weren't too great at anything else. Now let's get into some positive news as I talk about the offensive and defensive MVPs, starting as always on offense. And I'm going to give it to running back Melvin Gordon. The free agent signing had an immediate impact on the field and just narrowly missed his second career 1,000 rushing yard season. He looks to be the team's lead back going into next season, so let's hope he has another good one. He was 9th in the league in rushing attempts and 10th in the league in rushing yards. Now on to the defensive MVP and I'm going to give it to free safety Justin Simmons. The 50th safety commanded the secondary and had his breakout season rewarded with his first ever Pro Bowl appearance. He set career highs in interceptions, fumble recoveries and solo tackles. He was also tied for 4th in the league in interceptions. The Broncos went through numerous front office changes at the beginning of the offseason. First, their director of player personnel, 
Matt Russell announced his retirement after spending eight seasons in that role. Then, Broncos legend John Elway announced that he will step down from his general manager position, but he will remain the president of football operations for the franchise. So, the Broncos hired George Patton to be their new general manager. He spent the last 14 seasons with the Vikings, serving as both their assistant general manager and vice president of player personnel. They also promoted Darren Woogie to be the new director of player personnel. He previously served as the assistant director of college scouting for them. Coming into free agency, the Broncos had about 32 million in cap space as they were able to roll over almost 80 million from last season. In terms of signings, the Broncos used their cap space to give big deals to Ronald Darby and Kyle Fuller as they really worked on shoring up their secondary. They then signed the rest of their free agents to short and cheap deals. Right before the draft, the Broncos traded a 6th round pick to the Carolina Panthers for quarterback Teddy Bridgewater as they're still looking for their right QB. In terms of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Broncos held the 9th overall pick which they used to select my favorite prospect in the draft, Patrick Sertain II, the corner out of Alabama. They also used the rest of their draft picks to mainly address the defensive side of the ball. Now, the Broncos are in a great position to have themselves a great 2021 season. Let me explain. They had a great free agency, they had a great draft, they really showed up their secondary, and not to mention they're getting back Vaughn Miller and Cortland Sutton this season. Plus, they have a very favorable schedule next season. The only thing holding them back, much like the last few seasons, is their quarterback position. Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater coming off bad 2020 seasons, and I'm not even sure who the starter is going to be next season. I'm just going to assume it's Drew Locke, and I actually have a little faith in him that he will improve and at least be above average next season, but that is still very iffy. With all that being said, and most importantly, if the Broncos could avoid any major injuries, I could realistically see them going about 8 and 9 next season. Anyway guys, that was episode 9 of my 2020 NFL season review. Next week, we get this series into double digits as we move on to episode 10. And it's going to be a great episode. But you don't know that as yet. So you'll have to tune in next time when the episode drops to watch it yourself and be the judge of that. Like always, leave a like, share and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss when episode 10 drops. And I'll see you all next time. Take care.